joining Hello. us. Yes, thank you and for having me. available to present to us. All right, Tracy, over to you. A pleasant good night to all our Zoom and Facebook viewers. On behalf of the executive of our Love and Faith World Women's Ministry, I want to welcome you all and to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us this evening. Thanks to those who have joined us in our previous sessions and welcome to our first timers. Tonight, we have another exciting topic of discussion. Sit back, relax, get a mirror if you can, along with your pens and papers to make notes, and please feel free to interact in our question and answer segment as we move forward in this session. I now move us over to our president. Thank you very much, Sister Tracy. We will begin with the opening prayer by Elder Marjorie. Is Elder Marjorie here? All right, I'm not getting any response. Pastor Ricardo, could you open in prayer for us? Father, how we much we love your law. That of the royal law that Jesus Christ sums up the whole law and prophets within. We are thankful for this thing gathering, searching and seeking your face, even through you, the mirror of your word, mighty God. We pray for your manifest, not just your blessings, your manifest blessings among us. You must be inclined our hearts in faith for what is going to be poured out among us. Bless these proceedings in a mark and special way. And every word that is said here, every thought, every meditation, we pray that it will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Sir Garrick. At this time, Reverend Jennifer Owens will share a thought with us. Over to you, Rev. You're muted, muted. I want to talk to you a little tonight about the peace of God. Peace of God is what I think everyone on earth needs today. Men and women, boys and girls, we all need peace. But when we are not in Christ, we go about seeking peace in different ways and means. But Jesus Christ is the only one that can give true and lasting peace. When we truly desire peace and set our hearts on peace, he, not just a thing, not just something, not just a feeling, not just an emotion, he, the Prince of Peace, comes to reside within us. And when he comes, you and I will know it. There is a settledness. There is a calm even in the midst of the storm. There is a know-how that you will get through life's daily challenges. Challenges with our spouses, challenges with our children, challenges with co-workers, with management, with our church, and with other folks who we come in contact with. So tonight I want you to sit back and be ministered to as we leave the past behind, mm. as we make a concerted effort to chart a new course ahead. Our speaker will be coming to us tonight. I know she is prayed up. We have been praying as ladies for her that her delivery would be in the spirit, in Christ. And we so much look forward to tonight. 
many ladies will be on tonight. Wanting to leave their past behind or prior. I know our president, Pastor Lolette Garrick, wants all of us to have peace. Hallelujah. The executive team of Love and Faith Women's Ministry want you to have peace. Mm. And this is what I extend to you tonight. God bless you richly. Thank you. God bless you also, Reverend Jennifer. Thank you. At this time, we will do our theme song moving forward. So while Tracy and is getting that ready for us, welcome Sister Elia, Angela, Eskef, Gloria, Sophia, Suzanne, Michelle, and Emily. God bless you. We pray that you will receive from the Lord. Did you check the bottom left hand? Bottom left hand for the sound. Yeah, so while Tracy is getting that ready, let me ask a question. Pastor, I love your new hairdo. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Reva. Tracy, please, please check the, the left, bottom left for that box to check, to click. You have to stop sharing first. All right, by Tracy and you sorting the, herself out. Imagine that you have been marooned on an island. Decide two items that you would have brought if you knew there was a chance you might be stranded. That's a loaded one. Oh my God. You can just put your responses in the chat. Two items that you would have brought if you knew that. I need to see some responses in the chat. And while you're putting your responses in the chat, Tracy, what can I do? Would you like to um, allow me to share so that I can pick up the song. Oh, beautiful Emily says, Bible and fresh water. Excellent. Some more responses, please. Who makes all things new? Yeah, yeah. All right, here it goes. Surrender my life. 
Yes, we are not going back. Praise God. We are moving <laughs> ahead. The past no. is over. Welcome, Dorit. Welcome, Natoya. Before we introduce our guest speaker, let me check the chat to see some of the responses. <laughs> Natessia said, Bible and water. Sandra, water and Bible. Suzanne, water and Bible. Water and Bible. Need to keep me feet and me thirst quenched. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Come on. Wow, only a few responses. I need to see some more. I would have taken food and water and squeezing in the third. Did we say two? Did we say two? Two. Two. See, I would two. take food and water because the Bible is inside of me. Amen. That's what I say. So I would have taken food and water. It doesn't mean that you're either wrong or right. So let me get some more responses. If you have uh, justification, that's okay. Hammock and water. Lemoy, yes, thank you. Knife and prayer book. Esketh, thank you. Marjorie, water and Bible. Olive, food and water. Sophia, phone and water. And I'm sure that you all have justifications for the choice that you have made. Thank you very much for your cooperation. At this time, I'm going to be asking Sister Jade to introduce our guest speaker. Sister Jade, over to you, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Our guest speaker is an ordained evangelist of the apostolic faith. She has been saved for over 45 years. For over 25 years, she has led several community outreach initiatives to feed and care for the homeless, led special evangelism outreach programs, as well as provide support leadership for other church ministry programs. She also serves the state of Florida as a notary public and marriage officer. In addition, her free, in addition to her frequent preaching and public speaking assignment, she serves as a prayer coordinator at Victory Tabernacle Apostolic International, located in Avon Park, Florida. A well sought after international speaker, she has ministered at conferences, workshops, and personal development seminars in the US, Canada, Europe, South Africa, and the Caribbean. A certified leadership development coach, she worked for 27 years as an assistant vice president with responsibilities for operations at a prominent financial institution in Florida. She currently serves as senior property manager at a global real estate corporation based in Florida, South Florida, sorry. She lives by the conviction that life happens and the quicker we learn from our past experience of failure or success, the quicker we will grow into God's divine purpose. Our guest speaker is married to Michael Isaacs. She enjoys family time, cooking, traveling to the countryside, and event planning. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our guest speaker for tonight, Mrs. Jones Isaacs. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Over to you, Joan. Evangelist Joan, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me better now? I was thinking with my microphone off. I'm so sorry. Uh, just want to uh, say good evening yes. to everyone and to thank Faith, Love and Faith Ministries under the leadership of uh, Pastor and Bishop, Bishop Dr. Neville Owens and Reverend Jennifer Owens. Uh, please accept greetings tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus. Um, it's, I'm so excited to be here to share with you tonight on your subject, uh, getting past your past. 
and I'm seeing so many beautiful faces. Um, yes. You would, think, you would think that we haven't gone through anything in life, huh? <laughs> My goodness. It, it seems like, you know, we were just all put here so precious. And we are indeed precious before the Lord. But we've gone through some things. And I believe that it's a lot of those things that have shaped us to be who we are today. Yes. And uh, feel free to give a shout out as we share Hallelujah. in this Hallelujah. moment. Uh, um, I love interaction. I I, I must uh, express I love people. I love people. I love people till I get in trouble for loving people. Um, and I just want you to feel free to just praise God as we share in his word. So we're going to run quickly. I think I have 20, 25 minutes to share with you tonight. And I'm praying and with your help and the help of the Lord that somebody tonight will be delivered and set free from Hallelujah. whatever it is Amen. that Amen. is Amen. trying, trying, trying to hold Hallelujah. you back. Amen. So we're going to look at a scripture from Galatians chapter 5, in verse number 1 that says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. And then Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I would think that most of us on the line tonight are believers and that um, for those who have not yet accepted the Lord as your personal savior, I want to say to you tonight that it's only in Christ that you can find this liberty and this freedom. Oh, um, most of us know the song that says what a friend we have in jesus right mm. um, and a part of one of the verses says, oh what needless pain we bear it's all because we do not carry everything to god in prayer and uh, let me remind us that jesus prayed yes jesus prayed <laughs> And here's the sad thing about life. We find it easier to tell everybody about our disappointments except Jesus. <laughs> and, and only he and he alone is willing to listen to our fears, our anxieties, our disappointments, and, and without any bias, prejudices, or any judgment. Disappointments come in all forms, shapes, and sizes, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Disappointments will often lead us down the path of worry, despair, and anxiety. And as beautiful as I feel and look tonight, I have been disappointed. I've been in despair and I've had some anxieties. But God has been my help. And we yeah. all experience disappointments for, for reasons, for different reasons. If we were to ask everyone on the line tonight about what it is in life that has ever disappointed you, we probably would get various different uh, answers. But um, unmet expectations, unrealized dreams, and unfulfilled desires are just a few of the causes of disappointment. But know this, that the Bible that we love and that we get our examples from are full of disappointed people. <laughs> Can I say that again? The Bible that we're, is the word of God, the living word of God. In those words, we're going to find a whole lot of disappointed people. Ladies, I want you to think of the disappointment of Rebecca, Sarah, Rachel, Hannah, and even Elizabeth. Uh, they saw the evidence of their childless month, childlessness month after month and year after year. Yes. But... I must tell you tonight, I've been saved since I was 12 years old and walked as faithful as I knew how to and expected to have the dream life. Yes, because I was told when you... Joan, I think you muted yourself. Hmm. We cannot hear you. Can I tell you? John, you muted yourself. Can I mute? Can I host? Can I build a right. career? Got married and hoped to have a family. Yes. Instead, one disappointment after another. Um, I remember having 
Challenges Junior, you may have, have to start. You, you may have to start again when you got saved at twelve, when you were living a life upright as you were taught, because you were muted on inadvertently. So you're probably going to have to start there. Okay, not a problem. So I was saying that I got saved at twelve, and um, I did everything that I thought I knew how to live and walk the way that a Christian supposed to walk. But then I found out that even in doing all of that, I still had a lot of disappointments in my life. I went to school, I built a career, I got married hoping to have a family and all these wonderful things that young girls aspire to. But instead there were one disappointment after another. And, and my father who I tried to build a relationship with, uh, one time my dad said, if he didn't think I was his child, Imagine that disappointment. And this didn't happen when I was young. It happened not just when I was young rather, but even as an adult. But then I decided that, you know what? I'm gonna give myself to ministry 110%. But it often appeared that that still wasn't good enough. Mm -mm. So I grew up with one rejection after another. And after a while, I felt like I, I, I wasn't good enough. I, I felt that way. Bear in mind, I grew up just about all my life in church, hearing the word of God, being under the anointing word. But have you ever been in a crowd and felt alone? Mm -hmm. it, was mm -hmm. as if, as it, it was as if no one understood me. But this is life, nothing new. This is life, this is life. Uh, in the Old Testament, you have Job and Joseph. They had good reasons to be disappointed, both with people as well as with God. And then you have Elijah, the prophet, who expected the evidence of God on Mount Carmel, you know, all this power and all this thing to bring revival. But instead, they wanted to take his head off. Uh, he became so disappointed that he wanted to die. And, and so many of us have gone through things where we thought about it, uh, if we be honest to ourselves. You know, pressures of life and the cares of life just get to us. And some people... Um, are not with us today because they went all the way with that thought. Uh, and, but many people are stayed trapped in the past, but there is only one thing that can be done about the past and that is to forget it, let it go. I wanna say to us tonight, we need to learn to let things go. We must understand that when God asks of us, he will forgive and he will forget. And so must you. Whether it is your wrongdoing or somebody else's, it's that simple. When we make mistakes, which we all do, we must understand that Jesus made a provision to deal with that on the cross. Simple. And nothing that we do or nothing that happens to us, good or bad, that takes Jesus by surprise. <laughs> and as bad as you may think of whatever happened, uh, he doesn't have to call a conference. He doesn't have to get a, a group of people together to find a solution to whatever it is that you did wrong. And when he said it is finished, man's redemption is paid, he meant it. So Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14, brethren, I count not myself to have been apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forgetting those things that are behind and I, I press towards the prize of the mark of the high calling of Christ in Christ Jesus. So we have not yet arrived. So please, let us enjoy the trip. You know, when you're going on a long anticipated trip, you don't wait until you get there to be excited. The moment you start planning that trip, excitement starts to develop in you. So please get excited about where you're going and stop thinking about where you're coming from. Get excited about God's plan for you and where he's taking you and give thanks for the long way from where you came from despise the many disappointment, discouragement, and setbacks that you've had in your life. Understand for those of us who drive, listen, it is critical that we give more attention looking through the windshield than through the rear view mirror. The windshield was, is made bigger for a reason because you need to focus on where you're going, not so much where you're coming from. I made up my mind that I was going to live and not just survive. 
And the day that I decided that I was not gonna be on anybody's life support machine, where they could pull the plug when they felt like it was the day that I was delivered. And I started living a brand new life. Glory. I wanna share with you tonight about a man called Moses. Most of us are familiar with him. But if anyone was ever faced with repeated disappointment, it was Moses. As a baby, as we know, Pharaoh demanded that all young boys should be killed, but his mother saw in him that he was a proper child and decided, you know what? This one is not going to die. And that's what God said about each of us that's here listening Hallelujah. tonight. You're not going to die, but you shall Glory. live to declare the works of God. And so God made provision for, for Moses. And, and even though his mother sent him down the Nile, from, from, from there, uh, Pharaoh's daughter took him in, adopted him, and he became prince of Egypt. But he spent his formative years of his life raised by his own parents. God has a way of making an escape for you. And it's, it's, it's time that we understand that, that God has already made a way of escape for us. So Moses then learned of God's promises for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he was taught that the Israelites were God's people, chosen, blessed people of this world. And that's how you need to see yourself. You need to see yourself as God's chosen and that you're blessed. The Bible says we're blessed going out. We're blessed coming in. We're the head and not the tail. Those are not just words to say. Those are words of reality. That's who God created you to be. And as he said to Abraham, he was going to make us a nation and he was going to give them a land. Moses was never able to forget what his parents taught him. And so many of us grew up in church and, and, and grew up with our grandparents and, and they have taught us the word. Let us not forget what we have learned, but always remember what the word of God says about us. Uh, I imagine that Moses growing up hearing about who he was, but where he was at the time in, in the palace, this must have brought on identity crisis and caused a great deal of tension with him. As he grew, he saw the Hebrew slaves struggling and, and wondered what could he do? The, and, and the Bible tells us that he slew the Egyptian. He said, you can't do this to my brethren. And that caused him problem. He had to run for his life. Um, and the Bible said he spent 40 years on the backside of the mountain. Can you imagine the disappointment after growing up in the palace and enjoying palace life? And then all of a sudden now to, to, to be on the backside of a mountain? But that didn't stop Moses from realizing and coming to his full potential. The Bible says when he was 40 years old, he decided he was going to visit his fellow Israelites. And when he got there, to his surprise, he realized that somebody recognized who he was and what he did. And I know for a lot of us, that's our struggle. When somebody is constantly there to remind us of who we were, what we did in the past, and all the things that is a faint memory in our minds, somebody's always there to remind us. So many years before God called him, Moses longed to deliver his people. And you know, some years ago, as I was uh, studying the life of Moses, I realized that Moses left and went away for 40 years and he was the deliverer to the children of Israel. So you know what that meant? It meant that they were stuck as slaves for a 40 year period that they didn't have to, because when he came back that first time, he could have helped them to get deliverance. I'm saying to us tonight that we have to be careful about how we chase people out of our lives, because we don't know if that's the person that God sent to bring you deliverance. They rejected him. And so he had to run away again. By that rejection, they delayed their deliverance for 40 years. And two key reasons for disappointment that I want to mention tonight. And the first one is that he was disappointed in people because his, his expectation was that the people would understand what he wanted to do for them. 
And how many times you're disappointed by people because they don't understand you. They don't understand what your purpose is and what it is that you're trying to do. And then the second thing or reason for disappointment was circumstance. He was disappointed in his circumstances. After years of privileges and, and, and all the things that he had, he never dreamed that he was gonna spend his life this way. Seemed like a discouraging future. And today we become disappointed for precisely the same two reasons, people and circumstances. And when we set our hearts on people and our circumstances, we're usually disappointed, but God wants us to set our hearts only on him. He wants us to trust him, trust in his goodness, and trust him in the midst of our deepest disappointments. God knows where you are and where to find you like he found Moses tending sheep on the backside of the mountain. And how many times we find ourselves living the life that we didn't plan on. This was not my expectation. And we think this is it for us. But God knows where to find you. So stop saying, look what maybe come to. I'm talking to Jamaicans so I can go back in the dialect, right? <laughs> People say, if anybody did tell me this, I wouldn't think this would happen to me. But I'm here to say, despise the experiences that you have in life, God is your help. And we have to learn how to trust him. And the Bible says that God patiently waited on Moses and helped him through all his insecurities. Because when God spoke to him and told him that he was going to go down and tell Pharaoh to let his people go and he was bringing deliverance to them, Moses find every excuse in the book. He couldn't talk. He was not the right person. How many of us are giving God excuses today based on our past and what we have done and where we've been and, and, and where we've come from and, 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 and our family background and, and the rest of it? And we find every reason to give God while we can function in the capacity that he has called us to function. But I'm saying to us tonight that we have to learn how to overcome. But Moses was not discouraged nor defeated. Even God's wonderful promises didn't convince him of what God really had for him, what God's plan was for him. But I want to say to us tonight that we have to understand that God has great plans for us. And the, Moses, as he led the people, he encountered so many challenges, so many challenges that he became frustrated. And for so many of us, that's what's happened to us in life. Our life situation, the things that we've gone through has caused us to become frustrated and we can't understand where God really wants us to be. And, and so the Bible says Moses began to blame God for all the trouble that he was encountering because the people wouldn't believe the plans that God had for him. But the important thing is that he came to God and expressed his doubts, his fears, his feelings. And that's something that we don't do very often. So, so many times we hold it inside, we, we keep it back because we don't want to tell God as if he doesn't know what we're going through and what we're dealing with. But God can handle it. Yes, yes, God can handle it. Uh, he knows how we are feeling. And when we're honestly telling him about our disappointments on, on, our, on our heartaches, he can reassure and comfort us and give us the strength that we need to go on. So I ask you tonight, what is your excuse? Poor Moses, he was depending on his own ability, his own strength, not realizing that he was just an instrument in God's hands. And that's who we are today. We're just instruments in God's hand. It is God that we should aim to please and not people because God is our deliverer. You know, really and truly people, their intention is not to help you most of the time, but it's to see what is going to become of you, what is going to happen to you. But do you ever feel disappointed, exhausted about the, your life and where it's going? God recognizes genuine stress and he's here to help us. He's here to assist us in our walk with him. So Moses went through all these disappointments, but when God realized that it was too much for him, God sent him help. And the Bible says that God 
would have delivered them sooner and would have brought them into the promised land way years before the time that they had spent wandering in the wilderness. And every time they complained, it was another setback. And that's something that we have to learn to stop before we hinder our progress and hinder what God is doing in our life is try to limit the amount of time we complain about the things that not going right in our lives and the disappointments. When God punished the children of Israel, he held them back for 38 years in the wilderness because they complained about all the things that would go wrong. And his worst and final disappointment came when he, he Moses, was forbidden to enter into the promised land. And all God did was decided that he was just going to show him what he had to, what he, where he would have gone and show him what the children of Israel was going to inherit. And so many times for us, we lose out on what God has for us because we fail to believe what God says about us. Imagine God forbidding Moses to even pray and ask him anymore because God made up his mind that Moses was not going to enter into the promised land. And there are some circumstances that will never change, but we must learn to accept and keep trusting God despite our disappointments. Only in doing this so are we going to be able to experience life in its fullest is when we start accepting who we are in God and the things that God allowed to happen to us or come upon us is accepting that this is God's will for my life, but trusting him that he's going to see you through. Disappointment among God's people is not limited to just the, 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 the people in the Bible. But when you look at the Old Testament and you compare the New Testament, this happened with the disciples as well. They heard of a Messiah, that a Messiah would come and surely he came and he walked with them. He talked with them. He encouraged them. Ah, he showed them miracles and they were excited. And all of a sudden, one day, like he told them, three days, I'm going to destroy the temple and I'm going to build it back up. And exactly what happened. The Bible said they crucified him. And three days later, he came. But during that time, the disciples were discouraged. Of course, they were discouraged. Instead of, 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 of en enjoying the pleasures of being with Jesus, he was crucified and, and buried. All of their hopes buried with him when, when, when he went to the tomb. But like the word of God promised, he rose again and he came back. God had a, a much bigger picture than was written in the Old Testament. Jesus had to die and, 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 and rose again to rescue humanity from bondage and oppression and sin and to bring us into full liberty. His redemption was not just to bring about a temporary change uh, or just to change our circumstances. But can I say to us tonight, it's to change us for an eternal destiny. And so many times we want to just uh, be free in this life. But what the Bible says, if in this life only we had hope in God, we would be men most miserable. But, but, it, but it's an eternal destiny that, that, that Jesus had in mind for us when he came. And so tonight we want to be encouraged by that and to hold on to the promises of God. Disappointment is the first seed of doubt that intrudes on our faith. All the things that you believe, all that pastor says, all that you learn in Sunday school, disappointment it comes to, to intrude on that and to, to take that away from you. And when you think about it, though, disappointment sounds harmless. But it will stop our spiritual growth and make us bitter and defeated if we don't hold on to the promises of God. And that brings us back to two sources of most disappointed people and circumstances. When you think about it, has someone disappointed you? Did you marry thinking your husband would meet all your needs? Let me tell you something, no man can meet all of our needs, ladies. And no woman can meet all the needs of a man. God made us with a vacant space in our hearts in the innermost part of our being that only he can fulfill. And so he'll always let us experience disappointment with people so that we are driven right back to him. So I'm asking you tonight, are you disappointed in your circumstances? And if your joy depends on circumstances, then we're in trouble 
because circumstances are always changing. Yes, yes, yes. There are too many variables in life uh, for them to remain the same. Look at us today living in COVID and going through this experience. Who would have told us? We had so many plans and expectations. So many of us got married and excited about the life, the change, have children and watching them grow up and, and graduation and all of that coming aboard. And then here comes COVID. We're in lockdown, shut in. That's life. Things happen. Did you expect a promotion and somebody else got the promotion? Oh, I can tell you about that. As a divorce, you never planned on? Change your life, change your circumstances? Oh yes, it happens to the best of us. But what are we gonna do? We're gonna pick ourselves up and trust God, trust in his word. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. We have to learn how to be thankful and that's the antidote for disappointment. Uh, Psalms 73 taught us that. Uh, the writer says that when he looked at the prosperity of the wicked, when he saw how they flourished and, and, and how they were enjoying success, Oh, he was troubled in his mind. He said, what? I'm a child of God. How is this happening to me? But the Bible said when he went back in the house of God, thought on God's ways, adjusted his focus, he said, wait a minute. The wicked is standing on slippery ground. I'm a child of God and I have purpose. I have, I have destiny and I'm going to trust God. God says, I'm always with you. And that's something that we have to learn to believe to receive. The psalmist learned that when you have nothing left but God, you realize that he's enough. Your questions will not be answered, not all of them, and your circumstances may not improve. The person you set your heart on may not live up to your expectation, but God is the strength of your heart and your portion forever. And no wonder the prophet Abaku said, Though the fig tree will not blossom and it will not bud and there is no grape on the vine and the fields produce no fruit and the sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. We have to learn to find joy in serving the Lord. Joy in the experience of salvation and in trust in God. So in my closing, may I suggest to us tonight that we change the way we experience our disappointments. Yes, yes. I'm going to share a couple points, about 10, as we prepare in our closing. You may not want to consider accepting that things have changed. They're not as they used to be. Yes, that's something that we have to accept. Quit complaining and telling everyone how disappointed someone else made you feel but instead begin to examine how you contributed to your own disappointment and take the appropriate corrective actions to make things better. For who? For you. Because nobody really, nobody really understands as you understand the things that you have gone through. Can I say we need to get on with our lives by changing the way we look at ourselves, our talents, our capabilities, and our strength, yes, we've got to move on. You've got to use your strength to pull yourself out of your rut of disappointment. Yes, pull yourself up because sometimes nobody's going to do it for you. You've got to use your strength to get out of the situation that you're in. And then we need to seek competent, trusted, and confidential help. Yes, some of the people that we share things with, some of the people that we look for counsel, wrong people. Some of them doesn't have our best interests at heart. Some of them don't, doesn't mean you well. And most of the time, these are the people that we wanna share with because what? They will listen. But we wanna find strength from people that are competent that will help you to get where you need to be. We also want to develop a clear plan for our circumstances. 
a clear plan of appropriate action on how we're going to improve our circumstances. You know, when I was growing up with my grandmother, she would say, set it down, <laughs> write it down. We need to write some things down, put it in, on, on, take pen and paper and, and write it out and look it over. So you can de determine whether or not you're improving or you're still at the same place. Develop a clear plan and trust God. Feel good about yourself and give thanks for the blessings of life that God has placed upon you. And I ask you tonight, those of you who have a mirror, I want you to hold that mirror up. I want you to look in the mirror and see the beautiful person that God created you to be. And then I want you to track your progress. Do periodical evaluation and make constant adjustment to improve that progress. And finally, I ask us tonight to change the way that we see our situation and your situation will start changing towards you. If you don't change your situation, then your situation will change you. I am who I am tonight because I made up my mind that I was going to no longer allow people to determine who I am. I was not going to allow people to set goals for me or to determine the path that I take. But the fact that I know who I am in God, I made up my mind that I'm just going to allow God to be the center of my joy, to be my focus. And then all those who want to come along, God bless you. Join with me. But I refuse to allow anybody to take away the joy that God and God alone gave me. And I say that to everyone on this line tonight. Let us understand that this came to pass. And if you can pass it, you'll be able to develop more confidence in yourself, in the word of God, and you'll begin to trust God more. Tell yourself it came to pass. Thank you so much. I turn to our moderator for questions and answers. God bless you. Right. Thank you very much, Evangelist Jode. I am going to open the floor for comments and questions. While you're thinking about your questions and you're typing them in the chat, I am going to ask Reverend Jennifer to pray for Evangelist Joan. I think she already knows that this was coming in her spirit. Unmute Rev Jen and go ahead. So have your questions ready to post, but just bow your heads for Reverend Jen's prayer. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mighty Father, God. you have fashioned your handmaid mm. to be a beautiful mm. work of art. Mighty God. A diadem in your hand. Mm. You have taken her along the route mm. that she would not in herself mm. have gone. But you have led her footsteps mm. along a particular path. You said the footsteps, the steps of a righteous man mm. are ordered by the Lord. Father, I thank you for your daughter tonight. Mm. That she made a conscious decision to live by faith. Mm. Not to live in the realm of unbelief, but to walk away from doubts and fears. Even staring fear in the eyes mm. and stepping away. God, you have made her who she is today mm. and invested in her, my God, treasures to give to others. Mm. 
Lord, you have placed ministry in her hands because you can trust her. She will not violate the trust of others. She will uphold the dignity of others. She will be touched by the feelings of the infirmities and the weakness of others and will not judge them. My God, I thank you. We thank you. We pray a blessing upon our head tonight that you would chart an upward trajectory for her life. My God, that new endeavors will be placed on her table and you would feed her, my God, with fresh manna, fresh bread from on high. Thank you, my God, for opening the word tonight through her to feed us. Lord, may this word germinate mm. and bear much fruit, mm. that there will be blessings and reward mm. to her account. Mm. My God, the path for her has not been easy, mm. but God, you have given her a smile on her face and a step, a pep in her step. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that you will do greater things, mm -hmm. my God, for her in this season mm -hmm. than she has ever dreamed. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. Father, my thank God. you for holding her head up mm -hmm. high, my God, God, and causing her to observe mm -hmm. the valleys below. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You mm. will cause fresh water, my God, to be sprinkled mm. upon her, my God. my God. Hallelujah. The fresh anointing, mm. my God. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. The fresh my anointing God. that my only God. you give. Mighty God, oh. mighty God. A running over anointing. Hallelujah. On her head. My God, mm. my God. A new mm. transformation mighty that God. whoever she touches, mm. my God, mm. when whoever she counsels, mm. that will be that there will be that connection, mm. that connectivity. My God, there will be that overflow into mm. their lives mm. my god my god fruit uh, that mm. abound to her account mm. tonight in the name of mm. jesus christ my god my god thank god. you for the experiences my god uh, it has not left her lying in the dust my god my god hallelujah but she has risen, my God, shaking off disappointments, my shaking God. off, my God, unmet needs and desires. Mm. My God, and trust in you God. as the God of the my second God. chance, my God, God of the sixth and the seventh and the eighth mm. chance. My God, my we thank mm. you for your daughter's Jesus. life. I Cause her, to, her face to shine with your glory in this hour. May light shine upon her, yes, my God. Yes, light God. from the heavens. Mm. My God, we block mm. the forces of darkness in I the terrestrial realm. We block the forces of darkness mm. in the aquatic realm. Mm. We block the force of darkness in the mm. celestial realm. Yes, Lord. Don't penetrate the armor that you mm. will place over her tonight Mighty in God. the name of jesus mm. my god my god give Ooh. her a voice among many give her a voice among many give mm. her a voice among many in jesus name overturn uh, my I, god destructive forces I and god. arrows uh, mm. arrows and darts god. Uh, my god that I are god. sent uh, to mm. thwart her ministry Jesus, Arrows, uh, uh, nets and traps and snares. My Be God, born. in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, paralyze you in Jesus' name. Oh. And may your word alone, my God, come to pass over her life mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Oh. Thank you. Participants on Zoom and Facebook. This mm. is your opportunity to ask questions. Joan mm. is here, ready to answer the questions. You have heard her. So could you please ask her some questions or make some comments? Please go ahead. Sister Trace, um, Tracy, is yes, there any I'm question here. on 
I'm not okay. seeing any question on Facebook. However, um, I'm seeing uh, Jay Williams on Zoom asking to repeat the three main points. The three main reasons for disappointment. Right. Yes. Those that were given at the beginning. Yes. The Go three, ahead, John. The three reasons for disappointments? Yes, ma'am. Uh, three main reasons that you gave at the beginning. Oh, there were two, two reasons. The first one, people and circumstances. All right. And most times that's, that's um, well, people is the number one. Because, because for some reason, um, we put our trust and our confidence so much in people. And when they disappoint us, then that, that causes unrealistic expectation. And so it it's sometimes sends us into depression because we trusted that person so much. Yes. And when they disappoint us, then you know we lose hope, we lose faith, and and it, it's harmful. You know when you start depending up on on people and you start looking to people. You know David said in his word, "I will lift mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help." My help, help cometh from the Lord who make heaven and earth. And, and we say it a lot, but it, 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 it's, it's something that has to become a part of you where you see people uh, as, as, as who they are and for what they are. Thank you. And, and then the, the, if I can comment on the second, on number two, this, the circumstances, um, as I mentioned, you know, when your circumstances change, you have to learn how to adapt to the change because life happens. Things happen. You, you, you can't get away from it. Um, things are going to change. Like I said, look at us today in COVID. Who would have thought? But you have to learn how to adapt and make the necessary changes that, that you, and, and, and make up your mind that you're not going to live in a, a, a life of, of fear or doubt or or less than who God created you to be, you know, but, but just make up your mind that you're going to allow God to um, fulfill his purpose in your life because things do happen and things change. And you have some of the things you have no control over them anyways. Sometimes God is testing us, trying us to see where our faith is in him, in his word. Thank you. Uh, Lemoy has her hand open. Go ahead, Lamoy. Yes, Lamoy, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I was just trying to unmute myself. Um, well said, Evangelist. Thank you so much for um, sharing those words of wisdom, nuggets of wisdom. And just to add to what you are saying about you making that decision that you are going to take the reins of your life. You know, in counseling and just talking to people, I realized that a lot of folks are stuck with the why. Why did this happen to me? Why this was me? And, you know, there's really no answer to why, why you. But what we can change is our response. And even when we talk about forgiveness, it is never about, you know, what that person did to me in the past. So forgiveness is more so about you, the individual, wanting to be free, wanting to get rid of that bitterness. So as we move forward as ladies, let's hold on to that piece that was said that we're going to make that intentional decision that we're going to take the reins of our lives and we're going to move forward. So thank you for sharing. Welcome. God bless you, Lemoy. Are there other comments? or questions? If I can make a comment. Okay, go ahead. Another comment on that thought, you know, as, as to the why, if those of us who remember the story where the man that was the, born blind and when they brought him to Jesus and they asked whose fault was it that he was born blind and, and, and was it his parents? Was it something that he did? A, a lot of times things happen to us um, and we don't know why, but, but in this situation, um, Jesus said, no, it was for the glory of God. 
Sometimes God just wants to get glory out of our lives. And we say, you know, we, we love to sing the song, oh, if you can use anything, God, you can use me. Hello? Yes, we are hearing you. Yes, yes but, but when God begins to use us, we don't know what way he's going to use us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we don't know sometimes the situation that God allows us to get into. It's, it's sometimes to help somebody else. And he, use, he will use you like Job. Who would have thought? Um, in one day, Job lost everything, but, <laughs> but you know, and, and, and his own wife <laughs> first got and died. Oh my but, but the man found strength in the word of God. He said, naked came I into this world and naked I'm going to return. Yeah. So sometimes some of us have to come to that and say all the things I that I've gone know. through and look at the devil and said, I didn't bring anything here. I'm not taking anything with me and, and, and said to God be the glory. I'm still wow. going to give God praise. I'm still going to shine. I'm still going to be who Hallelujah. God said I'm going to be. Uh, you know, if, if I, Hallelujah. you know, we have, we only have a short time, but my testimony is long. I'm not this, this beautiful girl you see sitting here, but I've gone through a whole lot of things that could have kept me back from the, from enjoying the blessings of God. And, and it, it comes with, with, with a lot of responsibilities that I have to personally take and, and, and say to myself, that I, like I said, I refuse to allow things and people to keep me back from enjoying the things that God has created for me. Thank you, Joan. Reverend Jennifer, did you have a question? Um, evangelist, do you find that in talking to persons about their past, one of the things that would come up is that some persons are um, are angry at God and don't know how to get rid of the anger, blaming God for past situations, past failures. Oh yes, yes, but but I, I think how to overcome that is to accept the role that you played in whatever happened to you. Yes. Let me tell you one of the one of the one of the things that have helped me in life is not to hold anybody responsible for what happened to me, especially as an adult. When we become an adult, we have choices that we make. And a lot of times we make bad choices, not thinking about our future. Yes. And I think that's where we go wrong a, a whole lot of times is that we forget that the choices we make today affects what we, will happen to us tomorrow. Oh, and Jesus. sometimes it affects our children. It affects um, those yeah. who are related to us. So many times we have to understand that we don't live for ourselves alone, but, 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 but we're living for other people. And so we have to be careful about the choices that we make and how it will affect us, not just today, but in our future and take responsibility for it. There's nothing wrong and you can get mad. You can get angry because guess what? God understands those emotions. He understands those feelings. He understands everything. So when you're expressing that to God, the, the, the main thing that you can ever do is to be honest. I remember an elder in a church I used to be a member of used to say, to thine own self be true. If you can be honest to yourself, you can get over a whole lot of things that's hindering you to, from being at peace with yourself and with God today. And no matter if God allows something negative to happen in your life, just like I just said, it could be for his glory. Can he trust you? Can he trust you with all that he has invested in you when the test of time comes? Can he trust you? Like when Satan approached him about Job and, 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 and he said to Satan, Satan said to, to, to God, rather, well, if you hedge him around, if you give him all these things, of course he's <laughs> going to serve you. But, but God said, all right, I will remove the edge. For some of us saints, that's what God has allowed. He has allowed edges to be removed from us. And, and it points back. When you hold on to God, they've left to back up and say, wait a minute. She's not serving you like, 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 like the devil said about Job for naught. No, we don't serve God for the things he give us. We serve him for who he is because he's worthy of our praise. I'm not praising him for him to give me another house, another car uh, and things. 
No, he's the great I am, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the joy of my salvation. That's who I'm praising him for because of who he, who he is. And sometimes you have to open your mouth and express that and let the devil hear you, hear you say it. Not pastor, not the evangelist, not the preacher. Hear you say it out of your own mouth. Declare it, confess it, and say it. Let him back up Hallelujah. like Mount Jordan. Hallelujah. Back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Jordan. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You, back up. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you yes. got to start open up your mouth. Yes. Amen. Jordan to back up. Roll back. Back up. You know, Hallelujah. Michael was sharing with Hallelujah. me, and this book has been a, a revelation that when the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, the red, when you think about the sea, the sea have a depth to it. And for the children of Israel to walk on that, that means God had to raise the sea bed to land Hallelujah. for them to, to, to go over on it. Because Hallelujah. if not, they would have had a mountain because the Bible said when the water rolled back on the side, it was like a hill, a oh heap. Hallelujah. So God. you have to realize that when you come to that Red Sea, God is able to Jesus. roll it back. Thank He's you, able Jesus. to bring the seabed up so you can cross. And not only that, ladies, if you are like me and you wear those nice shoes, you're going to cross over on dry ground. <laughs> not in some <laughs> messy, slushy water, but you're going to cross over on dry ground. And when you cross over done, God is going to say to you, look back, look over. You see those Egyptians that you see today? You will Hallelujah. see them no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great. So learn how to Hallelujah. take responsibility and stand upon the word of God as it Jesus. relates to you and your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Amen. the chat, Craig, thank you very much, Joan. In the chat, Craig says, these objects fail to live up to our expectations. We lose hope and faith. Only then do we realize that we had diverted devotion from our Father God. Yes, thank you very much, Blake. And I think that the, 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 the spirit of intercession has now kicked in on Joan. So Joan, um, you're going to be interceding for the people who are on Facebook. Uh, forget forget the forum that you're on. Just, just do what God would normally use you to do. Intercede for the men and women who are here on Zoom and also on Facebook. Um, Pastor, before Amen. that, there's a Missy Anglin who has her hand up on Zoom. Uh, good night, everybody. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, is a short name for Missionary Anglin. Bless the Lord, Evangelist Joan Garrick. Bless you. Yes, thank you for the invitation. While you were speaking, I was able to jot down as many pointers as possible and just looking at them it just bring tears to my heart i remember you says in the early part that disappointment comes to intrude mm -hmm. on your faith that is so true I, I i hold that dear to my heart because god wants us to live by faith daily the other one that i wrote down you said if your joy depends on circumstances then you're in trouble because circumstances do change hallelujah yes. circumstances <laughs> I mean, these are things that I need to really put Hallelujah. to my memory that I remember them as I go from day to day. I, the other one that I wrote down is Psalm 73. Be thankful is the antidote to disappointment. My God, those are powerful, powerful mm. words. Praise the name of Jesus. And the other one I wrote down was, we have to find joy in serving God. And that is what know. many persons are lacking in the joy of my the mm. salvation. I remember when David said in Psalms 51, he said, take not the joy, my joy away from serving him. And he Jesus. says that change the way we look at our circumstances hallelujah what i started to do that when things around me not going the way that they ought to i just leave it alone mm -hmm. when the lord bring me into the book of saint matthew praise the name of jesus and he started to show me said look here i will provide your meat your water whatever you want i will provide it just pray lead not into temptation and the moment i started doing that mm. the things that i'm lacking god started to put them in place if i don't even a dollar he uses somebody else to bless me praise god thank, thank, you. God. thank, thank you very god. much missionary oh, Aglin. thank you missionary Aglin. god bless you 
Hallelujah. Bless you. Amen. Yes, go ahead, evangelist. Go. Um, I, want, I want us to I want us to create an atmosphere right where you are. Yes. Mm. You, see, you see, COVID can't stop us. COVID I cannot stop us. Mm. Where you Hallelujah. are, Jesus is there Glory. with you. Yes, and I Jesus. want you to open up your mouth. I want Hallelujah. you to open up yes, your mouth Jesus. and I want you to start giving and God Hallelujah. praise and giving God oh, thanks for every trial, oh, every trouble that you've been yes, through, Jesus. every disappointment that you've ever faced in your every life. I want you to give thanks God. in everything. Lord, he says, give the King of Kings God. all the praise. The devil expect you to fall back and to throw a pity party and to think of yourself less than who you are you want to open your mouth right now and you want to tell God thanks for his name of Jesus for everything that you've gone through in life has brought you to who you are today it has, it has helped you to become the man and the woman that you are today nothing is God by surprise uh, nothing is impossible with God if you hold on to the word of God as he said I will not lead you in a darker path than that which I have trod. After all, he said, when you're in the fire, I'm going to be with you. He said, to the water, it will not overflow you. Church of the living God, open up your mouth and tell God where you are as he meets you where you are. Set an appointment with him now that he will come down like he did with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day and minister to you. The son says he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy that I share as we tarry there, he says no longer has ever known in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God sit upon you. Let the joy of God rest in your heart. Declare with your own mouth, praise the name of God that I'm going to find peace in serving the Lord. I'm going to find joy and contentment in praising the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, in the and name of Jesus, we come to you, you Lord. Lord. We, we praise you for who you are, Jesus. the great I am, Thank the everlasting Lord, Father, Lord, the Lord, Prince of Peace. Oh Lord, God, you are our joy. Lord, you are Jesus. our strength. You are Thank our Lord, hope. Oh God, in you we live, oh, in you we move, in you we have yes, our being. Have our Father, we come in the name of Jesus tonight. Oh, oh God, God, thanking you, God, Lord, that you have kept us. Oh, Lord, from our mother's Lord, womb. Oh God, some of us were to be aborted. Oh God, some of us were to die in birth, but God, you catch us, oh, when our mothers pushed us out, oh, God, you anointed us, God, that we would be alive today, and I pray now in the name of Jesus, that as you have placed your anointing upon us, God, as you have kept us through these years, oh, through many dangers, many toils, and many fears, we have already come, oh, it's your grace that brought us safe thus far, and we know that faith will lead us on, anoint us for great service, Call us the higher calling tonight. Oh God, let the words of our mouth this tonight. Let the meditation of our heart, let it forever be accepted in your sight. Oh God, so many times, Lord, our hearts are filled with pain. So many times our hearts are heavy. So many times we have disappointment. But I pray you will give us, Lord, joy, Lord. I pray that you will give us, Lord, your peace. I pray, God, that you anoint him and rest upon your people tonight. I pray, God that you will pour out your spirit. Your word said in the last days, saith God, you will pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. You said your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. I pray God that now in the name of Jesus and upon the authority of the Holy Ghost that you will pour out your anointing upon your people tonight. I pray God that prophecy will come forth. I pray that anointing will come forth. I pray God that you will release somebody, Lord, from the bondage of sin. Somebody who has not yet accepted you. I pray that they will accept you as Lord and Savior. Oh God, I pray God that we will not just see you, God, as a God that gives and gives and gives, but see you as Lord, the King of Kings, the everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. Oh, you one who 
spoken oh, it was yes, done. Jesus. What was command and it stood fast. Oh, yes, I pray Jesus. God you will say help out of your sanctuary oh, tonight Jesus. and that you will stand up for our help. help. Oh, Lord, oh, the person hey, who is on this Jesus. line tonight, the person on Hallelujah. Facebook tonight, who has been Hallelujah. disappointed Hallelujah. one time too many, yes, I pray for an intervention of the Holy yes, Ghost. Jesus. I pray that you will meet them yes, where they are tonight. Jesus. I pray that you will comfort Jesus. them where they are tonight. Oh, I pray Hallelujah. that you will speak to them, God, oh, that no other voice can bring. I pray that you will show them that when you were on the cross, yes, that they were, you, they were on your mind. Yes, oh, Jesus. your word declared you were wounded for our transgression. You were bruised for our iniquity. You said the chastisement of our peace was upon you and that by your stripes we were healed. I pray, God, that you will heal sick bodies tonight. Oh, God, that you will heal sick minds tonight. Oh, God, those who have low self-esteem in the name of Jesus. I pray that we will look in the mirror of your word. Hallelujah. And that we will see, Lord God, that we were created in your image. Oh, God, that we were made in your likeness. You said, let us make man according to our image and according to our likeness. Oh, God, let us look at your words tonight. Oh, God, and see greatness. Oh, God, we will see, Lord Jesus. My oh God. God, we will see God that you have called us uh, to a high calling. Yes, oh yes. God, and that nothing is too hard yes, for you God. tonight. I pray you will give us a heart of forgiveness. Uh, work yes. upon our hearts tonight. Let yes. go, Lord God, of the yes. things uh, that easily beset us uh, and let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. You said for the joy that was set before you, you endure the cross, uh, despise the shame, and you are now sitting down at the right hand of the Father. Mm. I pray Hallelujah. tonight, God, for the faith in your word that we will run this race uh, with patience looking unto you tonight knowing that you are our help oh God and that you are a strong tower build up your people tonight I thank you Lord God for each and every one Lord remember Oh, God of love and faith ministry tonight. I pray for the pastor and bishop, for his wife. Oh, God, for those that labor with him. I pray, God, that you will continue to reveal yourself. Oh, God, like the men on the Emmaus Road. I pray, God, that you will show up on their behalf. Speak to them, God. I pray that you will reveal, oh, God, to them your word. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that whatever they have need of tonight, that every need will be supplied according to your word. I pray that you will rebuke them plans of the enemy. I pray that sickness will go from their bodies. I pray that their minds will be at peace in you. Oh God, I pray that tonight God, that everyone that is confused tonight, that the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds stayed upon you. Help us to understand God, that we were bought with a price most costly. You said not the corruptible things as silver and gold, but your precious blood. Oh God, and your blood will not go in vain. But I pray tonight that as it's reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest hill. Oh, that that same blood tonight will be applied to our hearts and that we will be strengthened in your word. I pray for every hearer tonight that when we hang up off this line tonight, oh God, that we'll find peace and joy and contentment in serving the Lord and we will understand, God, that one of these days you're coming back for the church. You said a church without spot or wrinkle, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's who we are in you tonight. And we stand up on the confession of our faith tonight that one of these days you're coming back. Oh God, and you will pick the church out of the church. So you said, oh, Are you in the church triumphant? Are you washed in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized in the body and forevermore abound. Father, it's not a well beginning, but it's a well done. I pray tonight that every one of us tonight, God, will endure to the end that we may be able to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We have been faithful over a few things and you will make us rulers over many anoint us for great service tonight as we present ourselves before you and we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor and we say thank you now in the name of jesus and our god shout hallelujah in the name of the lord in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah thank you god thank you jesus Upon your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight, God. And each of individuals tonight. Oh, God, you said we should lay aside the weight, the sin that easily beset us, and run the straight with patience in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus. I God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Hilo Master. Hilo. Hilo Master. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise God. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's time that you let it go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And let the peace of God rest in your heart. Hallelujah. So that you can now minister. Hallelujah. That you can minister as God has ministered to you. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God didn't call Amen. us Amen. to be depressed. God didn't call us to be sad. God didn't call us to fear. He said he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind to start walking in the fear of God. Not fear man. God and keep his commandments in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See yourself for who God called you to be. Not who people want you to be. Not what others expect of you. But what God expects of you. In the name of Jesus. There's a lot of work to do, Saints. A lot of work to do. People are depending upon us. Some people are waiting like the, like the children of Israel were waiting for a deliverer. Moses showed up and they refused him. Jesus. When God sends you help, receive it. When God sends you help, receive it. In the name of Jesus. And let God have his way in your life. My God. God has spoken. And the church Amen. Amen. Jesus. I know. Mm. How long are you going to carry it? How long are you going to carry it? How long are you going to carry it? I got it. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God. Don't be overweight. Don't be overweight. Overweight costs money. Overweight costs money. And you being overweight with the cares of life is going to cost you. My God. And some of us can't afford it. My God. When, you know when you get to the airport and you're overweight? Sometimes yes. they make you throw away your good stuff. Yes. yes. Have you ever been there? When they make you throw away your good yes. stuff that you had yes. used for. Yes. 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 Don't be overweight. Don't be overweight. My God. Time that you lay aside the weight, the sin, anything that is besetting you tonight. Yes, I'm saying to the body of Christ tonight, oh, we need to get rid of it. Ah, thank you, Lord. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Somebody is depending upon you. Maybe a family member, maybe a co worker, maybe the neighbor. You're holding up their progress. You're holding up what God wants to do in them because you have refused to let go of the past, let go of the hurt and the pain and somebody is depending on you tonight for the deliverance of their own soul 
Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm speaking to sense. you tonight. It could be your children, Jesus. mothers, yes. holding up, holding up fathers, hey, holding Jesus. up husband, holding up ex. Mm. Five yes. years, ten mm. years, he married God off with him own life, doing him own thing, and you yes. still bitter and angry and can't mm-hmm. get over it. In the Thank name of Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. let him go Jesus. and let yes. God wow. be praised in your life tonight. Yes. In the name of Jesus, name of all yes. who hurt you. All the brothers and sisters who did you wrong. Mm. Let us let them go and release them in the hand of God and find peace. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord God. So that the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. we pray that God will get glory yes, out of your life. Jesus. Praise you, God. Yes, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory to God. Hey, thank you, Lord. Mighty God. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, ah. Jesus. Thank you very much, Evangelist Joan. Thank At you. this time, Sister Susan is going to be moving the vote of thanks. Thank Hallelujah. you, Pastor Lolette. Good night, everyone. Oh I, on behalf of Love and Faith Women's Ministry, first of all, give thanks to the Lord God mm-hmm. who brings things to pass even this evening. I want to thank our chief guest evangelist, Joan Isaac, who took time out to grace this meeting. Evangelist Joan, you have augmented our spiritual lives by sharing your knowledge, wisdom, and experience that have helped to make you who you are to us tonight. A mighty woman of God, Mm. anointed presenter, facilitator of chain breaking and losing of bondage. Thank you. We have revisited the past, if we have, if we must be truthful, that hurts and are now, we're now ready to embrace the present and future that we so desire by God. After tonight, it is a new beginning. So we say ta-ta to the past. Bye-bye. Amen. It's it's behind us. I show appreciation to the leadership of this great church, Mm. Bishop and Rev. Jen, Mm. and the women ministry who have made this meeting possible. We thank you, our participants, both on Zoom and Facebook for being with us. It has remained a pronounced pleasure to have you with us every fortnight and are excited to see you again on May 27th. God bless you as we move forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. We have come to the end of tonight's meeting. Please raise your right hand. I got them. Mm. 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 The Lord bless you and keep bless you. you too. Mm. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace as you go. Jesus. God bless you. Walk good. God bless you. God. We yes. love you. God bless you. And we love you. Lord, to Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Bless your heart, Saint God. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I go. Mm. Mighty God. Mm.